Greetings, human peoples. How's it going? It's me, DK, your guy, driving his little car on the way home. I'm very excited today. Uh, it's it, First of all, it's nighttime. The sun's asleep, <clears throat> I assume. I mean, I can't see it. And since the earth is flat, you know, I assume it just goes away. Um, <laughs> I just clocked out tonight and um, got the next couple days, five days, well, vacation time starts, let's just say that. Um, very excited, we're going to go see a concert, and we're going to go stay in a nice hotel, and do all kinds of cool stuff. Um, since I've started my new position at work, I haven't had a lot of free time. My worked hours went up by, like, I worked a lot before. Man, I, I work a lot more now. Um, so yeah, my, my free time has been very limited, so doing this podcast was really my one thing I got to do, kind of. Now, I've had free time here and there at night, but, well, you know. Anyway, um, so I'm excited. We're going on vacation. Looking forward to that. Uh, we're going to go see a band. Um, I think I may have talked about them already. Cradle of Filth. <laughs> they're, uh, <laughs> I know it's ridiculous. They, they're, um, they're like, I don't even know what to call them. Like, <clears throat> you, you Originally, they were a sort of black metal, but they've really changed. They're not they're not black metal anymore. We've seen them before, uh, but they're just, just it's just one of those things, you know. If I heard them now for the first time, I don't think I would be, I don't think I would sign up, you know, for the fan club or anything, because my taste has changed. My tastes has changed. Oh, it's rough, but um, it's just one of those things. I, I found them at a specific time in my life, and they were they were the band I needed at the time. So they're for me, they're like a classic. They've been around forever, uh, since the early 90s, uh, just, you know, spreading the black, mat, the black metal magic. So I'm looking forward to seeing them. One time, the singer, who is named Danny Filth, by the way, that's his name, <laughs> Mr. Daniel of Filth, we were standing at uh, the venue that the show was going to be at, and this, this, this venue is in a well-known kind of bad, bad place. <laughs> like, not a, not a town you'd want to hang out in. And it shares a parking lot with, like, with a strip club. And often you'd go to the club, which is also just a bar. You can go to this club anytime. It's always open. It's a bar. But it's uh, right next to a strip club. So often, you know, the employees of the strip club will go to the bar. Whatever. Uh... We were we were in line for Cradle, and some guys right in front of me went, "Excuse me, I need to get through." I didn't really notice the accent right off the bat, but it was uh, it was Danny Filth and some other people coming from the strip club. So there you go. There's my Danny Filth story. He's a short little guy. He's cute. Um, also, he was looking directly at me, and uh, Steve, you know who that is, and he put his foot up on a monitor right at the edge of the stage and the monitor was not bolted down as maybe he assumed it was or not that heavy and he almost uh, inches from falling off the stage I mean it almost happened and he was staring right at us <laughs> and he quickly like looked away and like went somewhere else pretending like it didn't happen it was very good they were fun that show was also fun because we had to sit through Guar before and if you know who Guar is well let's just say we were covered in all kinds of fake bodily fluids that it, it was just water I was told but it didn't smell like water it smelled bad I don't know what it was but they would like launch things at the crowd and it was cold in there and cold outside and I was just wearing a t-shirt and I got sick afterwards <laughs> thanks Guar but then later Guar redeemed themselves by they uh I used to work at a CD store and uh that I don't know how exactly it happened but Guar had some relationship with the CD store somehow. I don't know. We sold their records and, uh, they put us on the list for a, for a, uh, like a festival show sounds of the underground 2007, 2006 or seven. It was a cool show. We, we got in for free. Thanks Guar. We're even now. <laughs> I accept your apology. So that's fun. 
Mm, not really my kind of music band, but music bands? What's happening? They're okay. I, I don't I hate, I don't go, I, I like metal, and I like that kind of thing, but just for whatever reason, they don't really do it for me. They're fine, whatever. I'm very picky when it comes to that kind of music. And again, it's weird that I like Cradle of Filth even, but I do love their extremity. Uh, they're pretty good, I have to say. I like them. And they, plus they do this kind of creepy, like it almost sounds like horror horror movie music in some parts. You know, they've got they've got the, a, sort of an orchestral sound at some points. It's whatever. It's fine. I'm not, I don't need to justify my enjoyment of a band to you. You probably don't even care. So I'll move on. I will. I'll move on. Last night we watched a movie that was insane. Oh my God. I want to watch it again. It was a movie from the 70s called Race with the Devil. Now, this came out during the height of like devil fever, Satan panic. Um, you may have, you may know about that uh, phenomenon in the 70s. There were like, you know, pe- people were saying they were in cults and there was the, you know, Charles Manson thing and the, you know, there people were saying, accusing their parents of uh, being witches or of, of murder or being in cults or covens or all kinds of crazy stuff. Uh, probably the the height of it, the movie The Exorcist kind of captures it, and just like that was it. People were done. People were like, "That's it, devil, get out!" But this movie combines satanic panic, which I don't know if that phrase exists, but I like it. The satanic panic of the seventies with uh, a love of seventy style like car chase movies. You know what I'm talking about? And, um, also like, it's like a vacation movie. <laughs> it's called race with the devil. It may have some actors you'd recognize. I, I don't know, maybe, uh, check it out on IMDb, but the movie, I don't even know where to begin, but these, this, this, these two couples go on this trip in this RV and they, they set up camp on the first night, very first night of their nice little vacation in this random, they just pull off the road. They're like, we don't want to go to the tourist places. We're going to go off the grid. And so they go to like, just this field (laughs) by this stream. And, uh, they just, they're sitting out. And what I liked about it was one thing that I really legitimately loved was they do drunk talk in the movie. And it really seems like they're drunk. They're doing, they're doing that whole, like, you know, I just want to say like, you're a really good friend. You know, you're just, you're a real good guy. And your, your wife, you're just a good, you guys are great. Like, not quite like that, but they do a really good, very convincing drunk talk in the movie. But they're sitting out in lawn chairs by the um, by the RV, and they just happen to look across this river. Or it's not a river. It's like, what do you call it? It's, it's a really shallow... It's running water. I guess it's a creek or a river, but it's very wide. And there's water flowing across. So, like, you could, they drive across it in their RV. It's not very deep. But anyway, they look across this small, very short river. <laughs> And they happen to see people around a fire and they go, oh, what's going on here? And the guy goes and, of course, gets his binoculars because in the 70s and 80s, maybe even 90s, you just kept binoculars in your car for some reason. And uh, like, who do you honestly right now, who do you know that has binoculars in their car? If you do, they're over 40. Anyway, they go and get binoculars and they look across the stream and they're doing like a satanic ritual and there's like an orgy kind of happening. And then there's this very strange selective censorship where th- this one woman is completely full frontal nude and she's blurred out. But to her left and right, boobs everywhere. There's boobs and every all kinds of stuff. Simulated sex happening all around. You know, sounds like a good time. And, uh, but for some reason, the main one is censored and blurred out and she is will- willingly sacrificed, I guess. They stab her and like, I think they like throw her on the fire. It's crazy. Um, but then the, the, the thing that ruins it is that the, the one guy's wife comes outside and she's like, it's getting late. You need to come in here and be quiet. We're trying to sleep in here. And the guy's like, honey, shut up, shut up. And she's like, no, you need to come in here. And it's, it's like, you need, we need to get up and drive it tomorrow. Of course, that's what it is. Um, <laughs> I just thought, I thought that was hilarious. Cause like, I can see that happening to me. Um, 
it's you know it's silly and the satanists see that they hear that and they start to chase them and they do like a cross country like almost like a satanic smoking in the bandit situation <laughs> it's so good there are, and i have to say as i've gotten older stunts in movies have become more impressive to me and i kind of talked about this with fight scenes in a couple episodes like a couple episodes ago fight scenes in movies are very impressive to me when they're done correctly and they're not used they don't use a bunch of cg some cg is fine blah 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 you already know my opinion on this but this movie has a ton of really good stunts stunt driving stunt stunt action like hand-to-hand kind of stunt stuff and also really good um like uh what do you call it when the cars blow up that kind of thing like i guess those are still stunts but this movie has some very good uh stunt driving and uh i was so, i honestly as a kid i would have thought oh that's cool the car flipped over and blew up but i was cheering when i saw some of these some of these stunts that they pulled and sure there are i'm sure you can see these stunts in all kinds of movies but for whatever reason this movie had such a had a certain feel to it and it all just i mean not only did, do i say that it felt real but it clearly was real now like you know they didn't shove a guy off of an overpass and then run him over with a car it was clearly a dummy i understand that but but the the stunts with the cars flipping and, and they were they were there were a lot of them and they were all real and I was legitimately impressed and cheering at the screen. Also, at one point, the guy, the main guy, goes into a store and just goes, hey, I want to buy a shotgun. <laughs> and the guy goes, all right, it'd be 200 bucks. And he's like, oh, I need a couple box of boxes of buckshot, too, with that. Okay, it'll be 225 Here you go. And he just buys a gun and leaves. The 70s were a different time. There's one moment when their RV is just full of snakes. <laughs> The Satanists are like, oh, we'll just put snakes in there. That'll take care of it. Um, there's one There's one excellent moment when they're driving the RV down down a highway and two Satanists have jumped on, on top of the RV and are trying to get in or one guy's trying to dump gas down like an open like skylight thing and set, set him on fire. And the one guy gets goes on top of it. The other guy, the good guy gets a shotgun. And goes on top, and he oh, it was it was really good. Like I'm excited about this movie. It wasn't a straight up horror movie. It wasn't a straight, it, but there's lots of like the the guy's like a racer. You don't really find out, but I think he's a racer. He does um, like motocross or something. And uh, so like the first thing you see is that guy going on a track and trying to get a good time or whatever. And but you see, so you see lots of like look at these new uh, motorcycles. They're not motorcycles. They're what did I say they're called? M- moto, M- M- what do you call that? Like motocross, that kind of thing. Whatever that's called. Are those called motocross bikes? I don't know anything about that stuff. I'm sorry. Uh, you see lots of that in the movie just for no reason. Just like, hey, we have these. These are cool, right? If there's driving to be done, it will be shown because it's the 70s. And people are interested in that. It was very good. I would watch it again. Race with the Devil. Very fun. Uh, the characters are good. <laughs> Man, I really liked it. The drunk acting was top notch, gotta say. Uh, and those were very determined and uh, organized Satanists, I have to say. Very good. Good job to the Satanists, by the way. <laughs> There's a bunch of those movies that I like. Those like sa- satanic panic style, like The Omen. Love The Omen. Uh, the Exorcist, obviously. There's some other ones. Amityville has some of that. That kind of seventies grungy horror feel you know what i mean love that um yeah so if you get a chance i i think it was on i think it was just on amazon prime or maybe it was i have a subscription to stars right now uh through amazon prime i think it's like five bucks a month but you can watch all the movies they're showing and you can watch but they have some shows i like uh, specifically ash versus evil dead i'm not loving the show just my, my evil dead update the third, second or third episode, there's one where they're in a funeral home. Hilarious. I was, I was laughing till I was crying. It was very good. Very, like, very perfect Evil Dead. But then some of the episodes just haven't been as good. There's been great moments from them, and Bruce Campbell's as good as ever. It's just it's something about it. It's just, man, I'm, it's not doing it for me as much as the old ones do. But well, that's to be expected. I'm finding things to love, and that's what's important. But anyway, that movie may have been on there. I'm not sure. 
Uh, I also have another uh, service. If you like horror movies, called Shudder. You really should get it if you like horror movies. And if, if you've got Amazon Prime, it's $5 a month. I don't always do it, but sometimes, like, I'll be looking for a movie to watch. And then I'll look and go, oh, this movie's available on Shudder. Okay, well, it's $5 a month for Shudder. I will just get a one-month Shudder subscription and then just immediately cancel it. But you've basically, you pay for one month. So then if you cancel it immediately, it won't restart. And uh, then you can watch all the movies you want. So it's like renting renting a huge catalog of movies for the month. So I don't always do it. Those things add up. You, you know, I try not to do too many of those. But yeah, the, Shudder is very good if you're into horror. They have some crazy things. And because they are owned by AMC now, they've gotten a lot of money to do uh, exclusive things. Uh, I watched a really cool movie on there called Cold Cold Hell. It was in German, and it was about this... I, did I talk about this movie? I can't remember. I'm sorry if I already have. It's all in German, but this woman is like a badass taxi driver, and she does uh, jujitsu. She's really... She lives on her own, and she's unhappy, and she's constantly harassed by people, and she learns jujitsu. Uh, well, at the beginning of the movie, you see that she like is a big fan of jujitsu and, and practices it. And she like beats up a guy, whatever. But she witnesses a murder, and the, essentially the whole movie is her trying to escape this murderer. And I liked it. It was very good. Uh, it's in German, but that didn't bother me. Uh, you know, you have to read. But the action was so good. It was like John Wick meets... Um, I don't know. John, it's like John Wick meets... Uh, I don't know. I don't know. Something something else with a serial killer. But she's just trying to get away. It was great, though. Anyway, Cold Hell, I believe, is what that was called. Enjoyed it as well. Um, I've talked a lot about movies, haven't I? Uh, last last episode, I gave you a song of the day that uh, apparently wasn't loved. Okay? But that's fine. I, I totally understand. Your complaints, Kodum, I'm talking to you. Your, your complaints are completely... Uh, I understand. It is a very melancholy to the point of maybe not being interesting kind of song. But I've always connected with that kind of music. So I'm standing by it. I'm not going to retract my song of the day. It's not going to happen, guys. Not going to happen. But no, I get it. I understand. It's not for everybody. And I didn't think these all would be. That would be insane of me to just assume that you'd like everything I suggested. The, the, honestly, the most important thing is that you gave it a chance. And 50-50 shot, if you had loved it, Awesome. you got a new song you like. And if not, you go, okay, well, maybe I don't like them. Fair enough. We all win. Uh, I just, I do love the the feeling of recommending something to someone. And I do that a lot. I've noticed that a lot of this is just me talking about things that I saw that I liked that maybe I want you to check out. But I love that when I recommend something and it connects with somebody, that's the best. Otherwise, I'm just sitting here talking about myself, and I'm boring. I'm talking about mini golf and things I did as a kid. Nobody likes that, I assume. Random story I just thought of. When I was a kid and Jurassic Park had just come out on VHS, my cousins and I watched it in their basement of their home in Indiana. Uh, nope, it was Kentucky. And uh, as soon as the movie was over... I loved it, by the way, but I was a little young, and it kind of scared me a little bit. But I loved it. I was really impressed. I loved the dinosaurs. The effects were amazing. Who didn't love Jurassic Park, right? Uh, my cousin just goes, all right, get up. Rewind it. <laughs> we're watching it again. And we literally just we watched Jurassic Park two times in a row. And then when the movie was over, he, we were in such a Jurassic Park fervor, fever, trance, uh, that we played Jurassic Park. My cousin pretended to be a velociraptor and chased us through the house. This is the same cousin that threw me through a wall. Uh, he, he really got into it. And he was way bigger than me and way stronger than me. I ended up being taller than him in, in the long run. But uh, he was he was real big. At this point, he was a teen and he was into like working out and stuff. So, or, or just getting whatever he was, he was, he was buff compared to me. Anyway, I was a little stick person and he chased me and made raptor noises and it terrified me, terrified me. I remember trying to get away and <laughs> he just grabbed me and like, he was so rough. Oh my God. I'm just, 
I'm having PTSD. Uh, pterodactyl, Tyrannosaurus, scary dilemma. That's that's what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about the the, the, the real thing that happens to people. That is an actual problem. So anyway, that's just a random thing I thought of. Jurassic Park. I don't know. I watched the first one recently and said, yeah, it's fine. I don't. I like the nostalgia feeling, but that's about it. I don't. I don't know what it is, but that movie. I sort of lost interest in it. I don't know what it is. Most of those movies I could watch over and over forever, like Indiana Jones or Star Wars or anything along those lines. Those kid movies I loved, but Jurassic Park. I don't know what it is. They just it doesn't do anything for me. It's and like there's all those sequels and we watched them all recently, and I just kept going. Should we bother to watch the next one? Uh, I guess we got nothing else to do. I just guess what they're gonna go to the island. That something bad, the dinosaurs are going to get, it's not going to be good. No one should be surprised by this. And some of those are just not good. But anyway. And so there's all this love for the new Jurassic World. I've only seen, I saw maybe a third of it on TV in a hotel room. And that's not giving it a fair chance, but I didn't love it. I, I don't know if I've changed, if I'm just not who that movie is for. I don't know. But as you know, my taste in movies is very specific and weird, and I apologize to no one. I like what I like. Has anybody seen A Quiet Place yet? I haven't had a chance to watch that. It's getting crazy reviews, and I am I like horror. And I, the weird thing is, I saw the trailer for it many, several times, uh, and I didn't care. I was like, yeah, that looks okay. Like, maybe we'll see it if we're bored. But I wasn't... Obviously, the movies come out, and I wasn't first in line. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so, I wonder if it is good. I've, people loved it. I just, I haven't seen it yet. I'm interested in that one. Um, I'm not going to do a song of the day today. And I'm going on a vacation, so the next episode won't be for probably about a week. Uh, I don't know if that's going to make anybody sad, but I'll be around. I'll, we'll be tweeting and whatever. And, uh, yeah, I think probably this will, this will wrap it up. I, uh, appreciate you listening. Appreciate you listening to my complaints and my thoughts and observations on things. As always, send me a message. Let me know what you thought. Uh, yeah. Thanks for listening. Thanks for, thanks for continuing to support me. Blah, blah, blah. I really mean it though. Even though I said blah, blah, blah. I'm just tired of hearing myself talk. Uh, maybe... Maybe I'll try to sneak an episode in on vacation. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, All right. May the force be with you. Thanks again for listening. And I bid you farewell. Farewell.